Everyone, this is three questions with Sean Gaylord. There you go, man. All right. So I'm so pumped to have Sean on. And actually, we were going to record this another time. We just ended up talking for two hours, and then we had to go. We couldn't record it. So I, like, cut our conversation just now to say, like, we got to record something this time, right? So, Sean, it's awesome to have you. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Sean actually is one of the authors of Because of a Teacher, too. So he wrote a chapter. So let's give a little... Well, oh, Sean, applause, right? So I actually, when Because of a Teacher came out, I don't know if you know this, when Because of a Teacher came out, you were so amazingly supportive, and I was so appreciative of that. But I was also like, I should have got Sean to write for it too, right? So I like, as soon, I don't, I don't know if I ever told you this. I always, I had like a list of like who, who are some people that would be like interested in writing. The, the next one and you were one of the very first people i wrote for because of a teacher too so uh, i'm so excited for you to be on there so like hey before like before we get into the questions like can you tell a little bit about your chapter and maybe the writing process anything about because of a teacher too well thank you george it's it's good to be on and i'm glad uh i'm glad you pressed play because yeah last time we you know i'm glad you <laughs> caught us because we were getting ready to go right. i just love going down rabbit holes with you man so i'm, I'm grateful <laughs> to be here uh, on a lot of ways, but I am such a big fan of that book on a, for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, um, I appreciate the, the ethos and the intention behind the celebration of teachers. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm a big champion for teachers. And then the second thing is, it, you know, when I read the book, um, it was like reading, you know, sitting down with a cup of coffee with some of my friends. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. there, there are some mutual friends that are that are in that book that that I I really have great respect and regard for, and then there were new friends that I was making in, in the midst right. of reading reading that book. So I um, I, I felt kind of like Chris Farley to your Paul <laughs> McCartney. <laughs> Whatever, that's a good analogy. I like that. When 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 you when you that was awesome. the shoulder, that was awesome. Remember that time when you were an innovator's mindset. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome. That was that. awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, and you, you did such an amazing job and I'm like really excited for you to be a part of it. And uh, yeah, it's actually funny because I saw you connecting with, like, I know, you know, Lainey, uh, yep. Dr. Big Mary Hemp Hill, and I know you connected with her and just they're amazing people. And so uh, I am so pumped about this. Now, again, before we get into three questions, I actually saw this on Facebook and I know if, if you know anything about Sean, he is a massive Beatles fan. I actually grew up, the, the Beatles are probably one of my favorite bands ever. And I like was obsessed with them when I was a kid. Um, and I actually, you know, I didn't have the albums, but I had every cassette tape, right? That you could get your hands on, right? So it tells you about kind of when I grew up. But I saw that you were just at a Paul McCartney concert and like dream come true. They had... At the top of the, I think it was like at the front page, it was about the Paul McCartney concert. And then it talked about like the obsessed Beatles principle and you're on there too. So <laughs> you're sharing space with Paul McCartney. So like, how, how was the concert? How was that experience? Well, it, it, again, yeah, I, I still can't believe I was on the front page with, with Paul. I keep missing Paul too, but, but I live in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and we do not get a lot of major acts mm -hmm. our way. So I always have to drive elsewhere to to see him. So when my sister, um, you know, sent me a text saying, Paul McCartney is coming to our town. What are you going to do about it? I I, I wigged out. It was Beatlemania. I, I had right. my own little private Beatlemania in my house. So uh, saw Paul on. Uh, yeah, saw Paul. Like, yeah, like I know him. Um, <laughs> but but uh, my wife and our twin daughters um, got to see him saturday in our in our town mm -hmm. um my oldest daughter who's in spain she's a little jealous um but um it, it, it's great seeing paul it was great but but i tell you what was what was what was even better george was experiencing the concert with my daughters who are old enough to right. really appreciate music they're both 19 and they grew up with the beatles in, in in their house so ha having that kind of interplay Amazing. with them was 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 phenomenal and moving not just as a fan but more moving as 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 a father so hey so what what was the what was the best song of the night i'm like i'm like see if i'll, I'll put you on the spot see if you'd, you'd pick one gosh man there were there were so many um 
I will say this probably for me, the best moment was when when he did I've Got a Feeling, which is a Beatles song off the Let It Be album. And what was special about that was they isolated John's vocal part oh, wow. on that song. And they had film footage of John singing I've Got a Feeling. So it starts off with John singing and then and then Paul comes in and sings his part with the band. And then the both of them start singing and harmonizing wow. together. And I I recommend you and anybody else who's tuning in, go on YouTube, just YouTube Paul McCartney. I've got a feeling just to experience that. Um, mm. it, it was it, it was stunning. I, I, I started crying. Um, you know, I was kind of holding on to, to, to my family with both arms during that moment. And, and then at the end, he said, wasn't that neat? Wasn't it great to sing? Wasn't it great for me to sing with my friend again? That's We're amazing. back together again. And, it, That's and amazing. It, it was so cool, man. That's goosebumps, so cool. man. That's, yeah. just gave you goosebumps. The, uh, hey, so I don't know what you think about this. The most underrated Christmas song of all time is Having a Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul McCartney. Is it Paul McCartney and the Wings? I love that song. That is, I, like, that is one of my favorite Christmas songs ever. I absolutely love it. I, I adore that song. <laughs> and uh, I had the 45 as a kid. When it came out, I think it was nine or ten when it came out, and uh, I know that song gets a bad, a bad kind of reputation. People either love it or hate it. Um, I love it. I love it, and it's just, it just, I, and sometimes I've I've been known to play it beyond <laughs> beyond Christmas. So. Yeah, I don't believe you. I was I was actually wondering if he played it there. I was like, probably not, but I, yeah. I love that song. All right, so let's get into three questions. So, Sean, I know you've had a ton of experience uh, working with educators. I know. Um, as you mentioned earlier, how much you appreciate all that they do. So when you think about your career, whether as a, a colleague, whether as a student, who is a teacher that really inspired you and why? First and, and foremost, uh, my mom and my dad, um, you know, and they still teach me today. Um, and, and, and a lot of their lessons I still, I still carry with them, and, and I'm grateful eternally uh, for them inspiring me to become a teacher, inspiring hiring me to be a husband and, and, and a mm -hmm. dad. Um, School-wise, um, and my parents are just cool. I, I'll just say that my parents are just two of the coolest folks uh, that, that I know. And um, I would say probably school-wise, that's my fifth grade teacher, and I, I write about her. Uh, I wrote about her in The Pepper Effect. I wrote her about her in the chapter for Because of a Teacher, too. And that's my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. McMonagle, um, who... Gosh, she she opened so many doors for me. Uh, she saw something in me that I did not see in myself. Uh, she introduced me to the Beatles. She introduced wow. me to literature. She introduced me to to writing, and and she was that kind of teacher that I really felt like I was important in her class. Like I felt I felt seen. I felt acknowledged. And and I would I, I would do anything for her. I would I would jump in front of a Mack truck for her. Um, and, and I'm eternally grateful for for all of her lessons. Uh, she was a, 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 a short lady. Uh, she was uh, from Britain. Um, and even though we were all taller than her, we, wow. we knew not to, to cross her. Um, she, she was one of those that just had wow. great love for kids, great love for language and words um and great love for teaching and and i just i and again i just knew at the age of 10 like i'm i'm a part of something important mm. in her class i'm 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 regarded here and and she and, and again i, I kind of raised a little bit of of, of, of sand in school and, and i couldn't get anything past her um so she she really pushed me and challenged me uh i know she loved me uh, when I when I still see her and I haven't I don't see her too often, but but I, I, I still kind of get that, that, that I still stand up a little straighter. Uh, I'm still very deferential to her. Right. Um, but and I'm eternally grateful for her, man. She she just she rocked my world. All right. We're going to give her a big shout out here. So I actually it's it's actually it's so cool that she introduced you to the Beatles because I actually think Dave Hill, he was my grade eight. Um, he was my grade eight teacher. He was my phys ed teacher. And he got me into basketball and I was like a hockey kid forever. Nice. You know, Canada, you got to grow up, but I wasn't very hockey. good at it. And he got me into basketball and I, I think about him quite a bit. We used to have like bets 
on games because he was a big Seattle Supersonics fan, which doesn't even exist anymore. But I was a Lakers fan. And I just remember, uh, yeah, like, you know, it's kind of amazing how some of our teachers inspire us to like, you know, some of our hobbies, some of the things that we love, you know, uh, to this day. So I, I appreciate that. So now you are currently a principal. I know that you are making a move over summer. You're, you're moving from one school to another. Mm -hmm. And uh, you you have worked with tons of administrators, you know, as I know as a consultant as well. So you think about your experience as an administrator and you think about some of the great administrators you worked with. Who's someone that sticks out and why? So I'll, I'll give a, a past example of, of someone who was with me in the formative years when I had hair. And then I'm going to talk about a current example that really inspires, who, who really inspires me. So um, when I was, uh, when I started off as an administrator, I was an assistant principal at Kernersville Middle School in North Carolina. And my principal, Debbie Brooks, um, who really, again, she took me as this kind of kid out of grad school. I was an English teacher. I was in a, in a I hadn't even finished my, my principal training program yet, my MSA, Master's mm -hmm. of School Administration. And she, she gave me a call um, and uh, we had a conversation. And, and, and from Debbie, I learned several things. You know, you, you hear about relationships and, and that word is used a lot in, in education. And sometimes I think we, we throw that word around right. you know, haphazardly. She was one that lived it authentically. And, and I say that in that De Debbie Brooks would probably be the, the person, and she would say this, she, she didn't go into, into the education wanting to be a principal. Everything kind of happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she, she, you, you couldn't pick her out as a principal in lineup because she, she was very humble um, and, and she was very much, uh, very much connected to teachers. So I, I learned that the importance of that. I learned the importance of humility. But I also learned, too, before school culture, became like a buzzword and thing. She talked about how our schoolhouse had to be a place that was positive and inviting for all. Yeah. And, and she lived that. So um, I, I remember my first day on the gig uh, as, an, as an AP, we had cafeteria duty. And, um, you know, I go in there and, you know, I knew what cafeteria duty would be. I'd pace around and, you know, make sure kids weren't fighting and throwing food. And so I walked there and she greeted me at the cafeteria door with a broom. And, and she said, uh, Sean, we, we sweep during um, cafeteria duty. Now, I thought sweep meaning, okay, we're going to move the kids. No, she literally said, no, we're, we're, gonna, we're, going, to, we're going to mop and, and sweep the floor during lunch uh, to help out the custodians. And then she said to me, it's also important, Sean, that our, our teachers see us get our hands dirty. Right. And, and, and that, so during, and, and then the other thing she said was dirt doesn't talk back. And she says, sometimes, sometimes, you know, during the course of our day, we need to have a sense of accomplishment. And sometimes you just get that from sweeping the floor. But she also oh. said too, um, this is where you can kind of eavesdrop on lunchtime conversations. You can pick up in, in Intel, you can, you can connect with kids. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that I, that I've carried with me to this day. Um, and I'm eternally grateful for. So that's a past example. Yes. A present example, and it's somebody that we're, we're mutual friends with, and in fact, she, she contributed to, to your book uh, because of a teacher. One is Lauren Kaufman, and oh. I, I'm so inspired by her, and, and she's an assistant principal in Long Island, and, uh, you know, I, I, I follow her, and I stay in touch with her, and, and um, the things that she does, like she lives out student-centeredness, and I think it's yeah. important for us as administrators that that we remember we are here for students we are here for kids yep. and and she lives and breathes that and and so i'm inspired by the content that she puts out her blog uh is one of my favorites um i i love the fact that that she stretches my thinking but but mm -hmm. also she truly puts students at the center of 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 of, of her core as as a gig and, and her chapter and and um because awesome. the future one is amazing man and you know that she's she's amazing i do and give her a little well, pause both of them the uh so i'm gonna i'm gonna take some credit i pushed laura into blog so hard good and the reason i did that is because i'm blessed to meet a lot of these educators and i have conversations with them and i'm like 
don't limit this to me. Like the stuff that I'm learning from you, you need to get going. So I, I think I actually, uh, Lauren, Lauren is kind of funny. Cause I like basically put her on the spot in front of her staff. Like you need to blog. Nice. And then she's like, ah, and then, you know, and then she like, I've done it, I've done it before to other people and they don't do it. And she just, she went all in. And I like, I, as much as I joke that, you know, I push her to do it. I, it's, I, I like find that's a very selfish thing for me. Cause I'm like, yeah, we all get better from this. Right. Like from people like Lauren connecting. So I love that you gave her that little shout out too. No, man. And uh, thank you for doing that push because no, seriously, she's like in my top yeah. three of blogs. And so when it lands in my inbox yeah, and sometimes it'll land in my inbox before she'll put it out on Instagram or to promote it. I, I, I always kind of like, I feel like, oh, it's yeah. like a new Beatles song or something. And because I can't wait to read it, I always have to kind of put myself in a space where I'm centered and focused. And I do that with kind of a few, few of those, few of those few blogs that I subscribe to. And, and I just always go, all right, I got to put myself in a quiet place. I want to read because I know I'm going to be fed. I know I'm going to she's get awesome. something meaningful because she's so intentional of how she arranges her words. And I go, wow. I mean, she she's. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for lighting up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like three seconds. I'm like, now you got to do hours and hours of work because of my three seconds of putting you on the spot. So she actually, the other, the other thing I love that you shared uh, is really kind of that pride in the school that you can show as a minister. And I know, um, I'm sure you get this based on the story you told. There's something, it tells me something about a school when I see administrator walk by a piece of garbage, whether they pick it up or not. And it tells yeah. me something. And that was for me, like, you know, that was something that was very important to me that, you know, we took pride in our school. And I remember actually um, talking with a school, I can't remember where it was, but we had a really tough conversation about, you know, the kids weren't taking pride in the school. There was a lot of behavioral issues. I said, do you see that piece of um, art above the gymnasium? And I pointed to it. I said, do you know it's ripped? It gets ripped down the middle and no one probably has noticed it. And it just is. And it's like, no, I don't think anyone cares. Like, I just think it is. And then, so we say we want pride in our school, but then we have things that are like half destroyed. And they, and they, it was like interesting because, and I, uh, this is something I always talk about is like, look at like every day you go into school, pretend it's your first day. That's Cause right. we tend to like become so numb to things that we don't like, we don't understand some of the messages we're sending to people by maybe just making everything normal but it's like you know it's a kid's only you know year there and sometimes they only have a few months and things like that so um they they took that message to heart and it, it really you know they're like yeah we didn't notice that and that that doesn't look good and i'm like maybe that's why the kids are not taking pride in the school because it's right right we, it is you know they see it as something but anyways the last question i'm gonna ask you and this is actually uh because of a teacher too is actually solely focused on the stories that we or the, the the wisdom that we wish we could have shared with ourselves when we first started teaching. So it is very focused on the first years of teaching. It's, um, you know, I don't know if I would say it's targeted to first year teachers, because uh, anyone could read it. But you know, it is meant to be for especially for those coming into the profession, but those stories resonate, no matter where you're in your career. And that's what you wrote about. So like, if you can go back and share advice for your first year of teaching, what what advice would you share to Sean? Three words, George. Um, know your impact. And I, um, you know, there. I'm grateful for that first year. I'm grateful for the, the the time that I had. And and I don't, you know, I don't have many horror teacher stories of you know locking myself in the closet or you know dr dropping the, the 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 vase or whatever. You know, I didn't have any of those kind of you know kind of goofy sitcom. -y, for your teacher moments. I was, I was really lucky. Um, but I was so like in my nose and, and in my, my, my kind of tunnel vision on right. lesson plans and, and survival that, that I didn't really step back and, and look at the fact that I'm there to, to make an impact. And, uh, you know, I, you know, just, just missed opportunities. And I would, I would kind of say to myself, I would tell that guy, that 22 year old, you know, geek Beatles freak, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, one, know your impact and, and really savor, don't rush through, savor the moment, savor the time that you have with your kids 
and and don't be afraid to share your your passions and and I I did a lot of that stuff later and and incorporated music and such in in into my classroom but um you know I I just think there's a lot of teachable moments that I missed because I was so mm-hmm. hell bent on schedule and planning and and, right. and following rules and and being dutiful and 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 then also too I you know at that time because it was a um I was in a volunteer teacher program. It was kind of the the Catholic version of Teach for America. So I was in an inner city um, school in in, in DC, and um, I um, I just I, I I I taught a fifth grade class. I wanted to be a high school English teacher. I wanted to be Sidney Poitier and Robin Williams right. and teach Walt Whitman and F. Scott Fitzgerald and Langston Hughes. And you know, here I am. I felt like the curriculum was beneath me and, and, and I may have taken that out. I know I took that on on the kids. And, and right. so I, uh, and I was so hell bent on, on getting to high school and, and, and moving to the next level. So mm. I, I, I lost a lot of opportunities and, and, and times to really nurture the kids. And, you know, now as I'm thinking about it, I mean, those kids, that's, that was 30 years ago. So I, my, I, I just celebrated my 30th year in education. Wow. And, and so those kids are like 40. <laughs> right. And they're still mad. They're still mad. You made them read that stuff. Yeah. So I just, I'm just having a, a senior moment here. Wow. That was, wow. That's, that's amazing. That's- yeah. And, you know, and like Sean, first of all, thanks for your vulnerability. And I think that's one of the things I loved about your writing. I loved about um, the other authors because of teacher is that you see someone who's, you know, 30 years into the profession who's had a, amazing opportunities, done incredible things. And it, we, we're still growing. We're still getting better. Like, there's no point. And I, like, I've always said this, once you're, once you're done learning, then you might as well quit teaching because it's, yeah. o- it's over for you. Right. And I think that um, was displayed so beautifully in your work. And um, I'm so proud to call you a friend and I, I appreciate all you do. And I appreciate how um, positive you are in the world, how you lift so many people up. And I know you do it in your school, but I, I for sure know you do it with the rest of the world because I see it on you know social media all the time and, and uh, your enthusiasm is contagious and uh, I hope more people connect with you after this podcast because I know, I know you're such a blessing to education in the world. Oh, George, thanks, brother. I I always walk away from our conversations a uh, a little a little bit uh, like Mrs. <laughs> McMonagle, man. Seriously, you know, like I'm standing, it, I'm standing taller. My heart is, is filled. Uh, it was funny this morning. I was telling our administrative team, I said, you know, I'm talking to George later. And, um, you know, it was kind of my entry point to kind of share some of your, your wisdom. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we were talking about, you know, taking the positives and, and, yeah. and screaming them so loud. And so thank you for, for your work and your positivity and your inspiration. And I will also say, and I'm not just saying this because you're, 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 you're my friend and all, but, but yeah. that because of a teacher book, uh, we we use that book as a, as an informal book study with our beginning teachers and their mentors, and some of the most powerful and rich conversations so, that we had came came out of that book. So I I really hope more teachers get, that that book lands in, in in the hands of beginning teachers and older teachers and mentors. Um, they they're and again I just said hey let's let's pick some chapters and 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 you all pick a chapter and we'll you know go from there. So we kind of hopped around the book. I love it. And, uh, but, but the folk, you know, a lot of teachers said, man, this is, man, I, I, gosh, I, I, I'm, I've never read a book like this and, and, and thank you. And, and, and so thank you on, on behalf of those guys. I'd be remiss yeah. if I didn't say that and mention that here. Well, I appreciate that, Sean. And so, Hey, make sure you connect with Sean on social media. We'll have links to the stuff below. You'll see pepper effect as well. And, uh, yeah, thanks for being a part of because of a teacher too. I'm so appreciative of how much you pushed the first one. And I'm so glad to have you a part of the second. So thanks everyone for listening. Have a wonderful day.